welcome to InfoSec Explained. Today we're going to be looking at Nmap. Nmap is a great little tool for mapping out networks, identifying hosts, and identifying the services running on those hosts. Nmap is free, as is Linux, and as you can see on the screen here, I'm running CentOS 5.8 inside VMware Player on my Windows 7 PC. Running under Linux, Nmap is faster and the results are more reliable than the Windows port. I'd highly recommend that you run Nmap under Linux. So if you don't have a Linux environment, look out for one of my other videos where I can help you set it up. So let's dive into Nmap. Nmap can be used to scan a single host or to scan a range of hosts. In its most simplest form, the command to scan a single host would be nmap followed by the IP address. As you can see from this result, 10.10.10.2 is not responding to ping requests. When you initiate a scan, nmap will initially ping the host to see if it's responding. If it responds, it will then go ahead and scan the host using TCP SYN scan. In this particular case, there's no 10.10.10.2 on my network, and so Nmap has given us a warning to say that a host appears to be down. If you still would like to scan it, then initiate the scan with a minus P0. That's going to say, Nmap, go ahead and scan it, even though you don't get any response to your ping request. Let's go ahead and scan a host that I know to be up, which is my default gateway, 10.10.10.1. As you can see, Nmap is pretty quick. It scanned the host in less than a second. It scanned about a thousand ports, a thousand well-known ports, and the results are shown on the screen. If I'd like to scan specific ports, I can initiate the scan like this. Nmap 10.10.10.1 minus P. And then I can specify my ports. FTP, maybe, SSH, Telnet, SMTP, and port 80 for a web server. Let's try that. Okay, we can see FTP is closed, SSH is closed, Talnet is closed, SMTP is closed, but there is a web server running. If I'd like to find out what version of web server is running, so that I can maybe look at possible vulnerabilities and exploits, I can use the minus SV option to try and ascertain version information. So let's give that a try. Nmap 10.10.10.1 minus P80 minus SV. It's a small s and a large v. What it's going to do now is going to look through a database of about 6,000 possible versions of different software and by performing various tests, looking at the responses received, it has, in this case, ascertained that it's a HTTP Squid Web Proxy version 2.7 point stable 9. The next thing we can do is we can use the switch minus O, and it's a large O, to try and ascertain the operating system which is running on the target host. So let's give that a try. Nmap 10.10.10.1 minus O. O for OS. What it's going to do is going to look at the responses of the packets coming back from the machine and it's going to try and ascertain what version of operating system is running based on lots of things such as TCP window size, sequence numbers and a lot more. In this particular case it's told us that we have IP COP running version 1.4 to 1.4.6. That's actually exactly what is running. So in this particular case, it's been very successful in determining the operating system which is running on that machine. So for a quick recap, nmap followed by the host with an O will give us the operating system of the host. And with an SV, that's a small s and a large v, think of version, it'll give us the version of the services found to be running on that machine. And you can do it like this, you can string them together to, do, to look at everything at once. Obviously, it's going to take a little bit longer. Just one thing. Earlier on, uh, 
when I did the minus SV, I did a minus P80, and I didn't really explain what it was for. Whoops, minus P80. Obviously, just before that, you had seen me do minus P21, comma 22, comma 23, etc. So this minus P80, because I knew from my previous scan that the web server was the only service which was actually listening on this server, I just put minus P80, so that's the only port it would scan. It just saves time. One other detail which is worth knowing is that uh, when specifying ports, you don't have to specify the exact port, sort of 21, 22, 23. You can do a range. So I could say 80, comma, 81, comma, 110 for POC3, and I could say 2000 to 3000 if I wanted to. So you can you can actually add ranges in there. Okay, so we've looked at scanning a single host. Now let's look at scanning a range of hosts. Nmap 10, 10, 10, 1 to 254. That's going to scan my whole network because I'm running a Class C network uh, on my LAN. Another way to do this, which is also accepted by Nmap, is to use CIDR notation, which means 10, 10, 10, 0 slash 24. Makes no difference how you specify the hosts to scan. Yeah, whatever's easier for you. So let's go ahead and scan some some uh, devices on my network. Nmap 10 10 10 0 slash 24 minus P 21 22 23 25 80 110 33 89 Yeah, that should do for now. So we've got uh, We've got all the ports we scanned earlier, and we've included 3389, which is Microsoft Remote Desktop. Okay. Okay, so 35 seconds to scan the network. As you can see, uh, the results have scrolled down the screen a little bit, and. Um, can be a pain if you're scanning a large network. I mean, we only have five hosts up, but you can imagine if there was 125 hosts, um, it, it might be a problem in terms of scrolling up and down the screen. That's why I like to use a little program called T. Uh, T is a program that will write the results in two places. It'll put them in a screen for us to see it as it happens, but it'll also put them in a file. So I want to run that scan again. This time, I'm going to put the pipe T and to a folder and to a file. So all this is doing is running the same scan. We use the pipe sign to take the results, send them into the program called T, and one of the arguments to the program called T is the file name, which is slash temp, the dot for the current directory, temp for the directory underneath it, uh, and the file name is going to be results. So what this is going to do, I'm going to take the results we received from Nmap, it's going to write them to the screen and to a file in my temp directory. By doing this, no matter how many results we see, we can quite easily scroll up and down it and look at it in a in a file. So they've been saved for us. Okay, so we've got port 80 open on my default gateway, which is my Linux server. We've got it open on my Belkin access point. We've got SSH open on dot eighty seven. We've got a Netgear you can see there, Games Clan PC on dot ninety eight. So you can see various uh, various devices on the network. Seven hosts set scanned in twenty six seconds, and the results will be written ls temp. There's a file called results, and I can look at that file with cat temp results, and I can use the pipe to more to have the screen stop per screen. There we go. So we've got 10, 10, 10, 1, 3, 87, 88, 98, 254. Seven hosts, 26 seconds. Okay, the last thing I want to show you is uh, is the greppable output. The more I use Linux, the more I find the uh, grep command to be very, very helpful in passing results. So um, let's just change directory to a 1. Okay, get rid of that file we created earlier. Yes, please. Okay, so I'm going to use a bigger network this time so I can get more results so I can uh, 
better demonstrate the usefulness of the grepable output. Nmap 74.207.244.221 minus P, I'll scan uh, 22 and 23. Um, okay, I'm going to write these results using T as we did earlier, and this particular one is going to be non grepable. Okay, so this is going to be a result set which are non grepable. You will see what I mean in a moment. Oh, my mistake. What I needed to do there was not scan one host, but scan the full slash 24, the full class C range on which that host is found. Okay. So when we finish this, we're going to have a file called non greppable Then we're going to do it with the greppable output. We'll make a second file, which will be greppable Then I'll show you how they differ. So there's your first set of results. Now let's change this to greppable and we'll use the the switch actually OG which is the switch um, minus output greppable already takes a file as a as an argument so we don't need to T it. So in this case we're going to call it greppable. Okay, so whenever you use our OG, you don't need T because you have to specify the file, otherwise Nmap will complain. Okay, so same range, same ports, but with OG greppable. So when this finishes, we'll have two files, greppable and non greppable. There we go. Alright, so LS, greppable and non greppable. Cat, non greppable. That's what it looks like. Cat, grabable. That's what it looks like. Now the difference is, if I want to show only um, only the IP addresses or the hosts of the hosts which have 23 open. Let's go 22 open. There's more of those. So altogether we have 194 hosts. But if I say um, cat grabable. Pipe that to grep um, 22 open and then we see only the hosts that have 22 open. Oh, I'm just going to use word count to count how many. 155 you can see. So rather than being 194 hosts shown uh, where some of them have SSH closed what we're seeing is 155 hosts with SSH open. Let's see if there are any hosts here with 23 open. All right. Wow, there's only one. So in that 194 hosts, only one of them is listening on the Telnet port, which is, uh, as you probably know, is quite insecure. It, does, uh, it doesn't encrypt anything, so passwords are clear text, etc. So it's not a very secure protocol. Okay. So um, that's pretty cool, the greppable output. And I hope you can see why, if we did that with the non greppable, non greppable, did we do it like that? And we grep for, say, SSH. You see what's happened? It's showing, it's showing the lines which say 22 is open, but it, we're not getting the IP addresses because it, it was all on different lines. So hopefully you can see now that the uh, grappable output is, is much more useful. Okay, that concludes our look at Nmap. It's a great little tool that I regularly use at work. Um, if you found it interesting and you'd like to see more of my videos, then go ahead and subscribe. I'm going to be doing my best to release on a regular basis. I'm going to be covering lots of information security and digital forensics tools. Um, videos coming up on things like Driftnet, DSniff, Nessus, TCP Dump, um, and some uh, digital forensics tools. So hit the subscribe button, you'll be notified when I release a new video, and um, I'm going to do my best to make sure that it's both informative and interesting for you. See you in the next video.